there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World. We're in Las Vegas on the Strip, fabulous Las Vegas. And today what we have for you are basically some things that you should know before you come to Vegas. Because when you look online to find stuff for Vegas, there's tons of information out there about the shows and the sites and stuff like that. But there's the little things you might not know about. So what we're gonna do in this video is go through the things that I wish I would have known before I came to Vegas that first time so I get a better experience when I did come here. Now the first thing you wanna do is when you're gonna to come to Vegas, what are you gonna do? Well, I'll be honest, if you don't like gambling, it will get a little boring after a few days here, okay? This isn't a place you're gonna spend a week if you don't gamble. If you gamble, there's always stuff to do. But if you're not gonna gamble, if you're looking for things besides gambling, there's a lot of really free stuff out there you can do. You can go to watch the Bellagio fountains they start during the day and they're at every half hour till the evening then they're every 15 minutes you're gonna to go to the Mirage which is right behind the camera there you can go to the Mirage and watch the volcano explode there it's at 7 and 8 o'clock every day and then on the weekends it's 7 8 and 9 o'clock at night as well so it is kind of a cool thing to do and there's some really cool like free stuff to do one of the things I recommend walk around some of the uh, hotels and the casinos inside the Venetian to see the the canals there or go through the shops in the the forum shops at the at Caesars there's all kinds of cool shopping to check out and see and how they don't everything up and it's free and that's one of the things that's cool is there are some good free stuff to do here and part of this going through the casino now now some other things you can do when you are here if you're down in downtown I do recommend going to the mob museum it is quite an experience to see the history of the mob and the museum is put together extremely well like I was fascinated the entire way through where some museums is only a little bit here and there the mob museum is a must-see when you're here also there's like a neon like the old neon lights there's the like the graveyard for those you can see and check those out it's a museum for the neon lights that's kind of cool but in general there's not a lot of cultural museums and stuff like that you can go to like the Bellagio and see their conservatory with the flowers and stuff you can go to circus circus to see the circus performers but just know this is a gambling city, so you need to gamble. Otherwise, after a few days, you might be like, la la la, what else am I gonna do, okay? The problem is, if you wanna do stuff here though, and it's gonna cost stuff, it's gonna cost a lot, because Vegas is expensive. I know that the flights coming in, yes, they are affordable with Southwest and other airlines. It's cheap to get here, but believe me, they get your money no matter what, if you gamble or you don't gamble. So be prepared for spending a lot of money when you come here. The $9 buffet, it's kind of tough to find those now those are like $29 buffets now okay so just be prepared to spend a lot of money you're gonna to go to nicer restaurants or even middle-class restaurants $25 and up for your plate okay just for your meal but the thing that's really expensive here in Vegas is drinking yes you can get the comp drinks the free drinks if you're gambling if you're not gambling you're gonna pay through the nose if you're gonna be drinking okay I'm just gonna warn you like that now, what the thing is, is a lot of places will have some kind of deals, buy one, get one free, or two for one deals. Find those, that's gonna be your best bet. If you are gonna drink in the casino, just even if you don't like gambling, play the penny slots so the cocktail waitress comes by and tip her so that she comes back and gives you more free drinks, okay? Another thing with Vegas is you're gonna be, with the money side of it, you are gonna be tipping a lot. You're gonna tip the bellboys a couple dollars when they take your bags up. You're gonna tip five dollars or so like that to your, to your tour guide. You're gonna be tipping 15 to 20 percent to your waiter and things like that. And it really does add up. And that's one of the things that does make it really expensive is all this extra stuff you're gonna be paying. Now, now, another thing you want to look at in terms of coming to Las Vegas is how am I going to get around? Well, I'm going to tell you a little shock here. Taxis are really expensive. I know, shocking, right? But no, I'm serious. The, from the airport to the strip, you're going to be paying like 40 bucks. And you may think, oh, well, that's just from the airport to the strip. Well, you know what? It's going to be about 20 bucks from the strip to downtown. If you want to go to the Fremont Street and see the Fremont Street experience, which is... Um, quite an interesting experience when you do go there I'll just tell you that right now okay so just just be aware of that okay uh, the taxes are expensive and one thing that gets you on the taxis is if you pay with a credit card when you swipe it'll give you the options do you want to tip 20 30 or 40 percent and then it says other so you click other and you'll think oh this is a percentage no it's a dollar amount so you might put in a 15 to put 15 percent but what you actually did was tip them 15 dollars so ow that can be a bit of a shock there okay now if you're looking to get around you can walk around up and down the strip and stuff like that it is you know kind of fun to go and see all the stuff and explore and walking all the way down you know past mandalay bay to go see the uh go see the the, the fabulous las vegas sign that is cool, but your feet will get tired from all the walking, so be prepared for that. 
um, if you are going to be wanting to use public transport, they do have some pretty good deals. You got two lines that are going through here. The one you'll probably use is called the Deuce. It's a double decker bus, hence why the Deuce. And the thing is, they have really good deals on the, the, the buses when you go here. I mean, compared to the other stuff, you can get three days, hop on, hop off as much as you want for like 20 bucks. They have 24 hour tickets for $8. You know, if you want to just go for a couple hours, there's another price for that for those tickets. You just swipe. Very easy to do. They stop all over the place and it's relatively safe when you're taking the bus though. Sometimes you're taking the bus, you're like, I don't know if I want to get out here. Just stay on the bus. You'll be okay. And the drivers are really helpful if you want to know where to get off. Now the thing is, when you're looking at things to do in Vegas, there's actually things off the strip. You can go to Mount Charleston and you can go hiking there and it's going to be a lot cooler there if you're getting here in the summer. It's really hot. Um, you can go to, oh, you go to Hoover, take a tour of Hoover Dam, go to Lake Mead. Um, you can go to Red Rock and see the stuff there. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff to do outside of Vegas if you want to like leave the strip you can do that you want to go shoot automatic weapons hey that's up to you go ahead you want to rent a, a fancy fast car you can do that there's tons of stuff to do here in Vegas just be ready for that now I'm not a huge gambler so I'm not big on the gambling stuff but one thing I really do love about coming to Vegas is the food you will eat very well here if you don't like gambling it's okay just go eat because there's lots of great restaurants middle price, high price, whatever you want, they've got it. And if you want to eat different kinds of food, if you want French or Italian or American or Ethiopian or whatever, they have that here. And it's really great because you can really eat really well. And their service is actually pretty good because people really do live off tips here. This is a very big living off tips place. And so you can really get some really good service here, sometimes over the top. So just be prepared for that. Now, along with that food in terms of the pricing side of things, I will tell you this, if you're going to be deciding between like a middle class and a lower class or a middle class and an upper class, the prices are high everywhere. So you might as well spend the extra, you know, five to ten dollars to go to the really nice place because it does pay off. Now, some of the hidden fees that are really going to bug you when you do come here to kind of nail you with the prices. Um, one thing you got to look at is resort fees. Now, you're going to stay at one of these resorts, you know, the casino resorts here in Vegas. Um, realize that the price you pay on bookings or whatever isn't the end price. Yes, there is the taxes that go on to there, but then there's also the resort fee, which could be $35 added on every night for the privilege to use the pool and Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And it's not like you have an option not to get it, okay? And they usually don't put that in the prices before you come, so be prepared for that. Also, if you're looking to take money out, again, the casinos, they're gonna get their money because you use the ATM of the casinos, it could be six bucks for an ATM fee. Okay, so bring your cash with you. All the hotels pretty much have a safe in there. Do you put your valuables in? Use it if you're gonna have extra cash and things like that, all right? Now, if you're gonna be coming with your own car, what's nice is here is parking's pretty much free most everywhere in Vegas because they want you to come here. They want you to come and gamble and spend your money and do all those things. So they've done a really good job of making lots of free parking around. Driving around here can be a little frustrating, especially on the strip when it's busy. So just kind of plan around that and make sure if you're gonna be coming to a resort, you're gonna, you need to park and stuff like that. Ask them, call them up and say, hey, what's the best way for me to get to you? Should I be taking the highway around or should I come down the strip? What do you recommend? It can save a lot of headaches. Take my word for it, okay? Now, I realize that gambling is probably why you're coming here, and the gambling is 24-7, and it is everywhere. You'll see it at, you know, the, the yes, you'll see it at, at the casinos, of course, and you'll see it at the restaurants, and you'll see that at the, you know, gro grocery stores, and you'll see it everywhere. I mean, gambling is everywhere. You'll come off the plane at the airport, I've been carrying, boom, there's, <laughs> you can gamble in the terminal. Also, you can gamble while you wait a baggage claim. Gambling is all over the place, so be ready for that. And if you don't like gambling, I can't say it enough, you're gonna get a little bored here after a while. You know, you could go to shows when you are here, and there are stuff, you know, Donnie and Maria are at the Flamingo, and, and Celine Dion is at Caesars Palace, and you have all these people out there. And the thing is, you don't have to go to the big shows, okay? If you're gonna go to a big show like a Celine Dion or something like that, or Britney Spears, you need to book your tickets before you come. The smaller shows you can usually pick up when you are here. If you're gonna go see like, you know, Mac Harris or something like that, like a kid-friendly, you know, magician show, they've got that at Harris out there, one and three o'clock. And there's shows during the day and in the evening to see. Uh, make sure you know what time you should be there and what time you know it starts and stuff like that so you can get your seats for any of those shows but if you're not sure what show to go to talk to your concierge they know everything out there if you want to go to more risque like a burlesque show you know they do have those out there too so you can see pretty much anything you want okay now another thing you should know is when you do come to Vegas pretty much everywhere in the US it's like a sin to smoke well in Sin City it's not a sin to smoke people do smoke here you can smoke in the casinos and other places so be prepared for that because if you're not used to the smoking 
just deal with it, okay? You can't sit and go, <coughs> I can't believe they're smoking. I've seen some people almost get into some fisticuffs because of that, because of all the drinking and stuff like that. And that kind of leads into the kind of seedier side of Vegas. When you do come here, you know, when you walk out, it's like about seven o'clock at night. It goes from like crazy funny to crazy uh-oh kind of stuff. So make sure you keep your eyes open. You see guys that have been drinking and stuff like that, don't try to play or play with them and stuff like that. It can cause some problems. And you will see some people around that may feel, make you feel uncomfortable, especially in the evening. Like if we talk about safety in general, usually on the strip you're gonna be okay. Be careful when you cross the streets because the cabs, if you're running between the middle, oh, I wanna see the Bellagio fountains, and you run and someone hits you, look, it's your fault. You gotta cross and they have these crosswalks that go up and over the road, uh, you know, Las Vegas, Las Vegas Boulevard. Use those, okay? They're, they're escalators and there's elevators to them. So there's no reason to say, well, that's too much effort. It's a lot easier. So don't run across the street because you get hit, it's your fault, okay? Uh, another thing I, w I would say is stay on the strip. Don't go off the strip. You go, you know, behind the stuff and behind the stuff. Sometimes the locals will say that's not really a good idea. So be careful with that. You know, when you go by the stratosphere between stratosphere and downtown, you might not feel comfortable there too. So just kind of pay attention to where you're at. You know, especially going to go out late night. Make sure you know you can get a taxi. They have Lyft. They have Uber. All those things here. You will pay a lot for them. But hey, there are those options out there to keep you a bit safer. Another thing I'll say about safety is actually about the weather because it can get extremely hot here in the summer, like 115, 120 in the summer with the sun beating down on you. So make sure if you're gonna be here then, bring your sunblock to keep yourself from getting burned. Heck, bring your sunblock. I'm here in February, end of February, beginning of March, and I'm getting sunburn going around. So I had to get my SPF 50 and stuff like that. You know, if you need to go in, go in the casinos. They're pretty inside. Get out of the heat so you don't get dehydrated. And don't just drink, you know, alcohol. Also drink water and other things to keep hydrated because it can be a little bit dangerous like that, okay? Another thing with the weather is you got to realize is this is a desert climate. So it can go from warm during the day to actually really chilly at night. So make sure you're layering. Have your quarters, your Walters World quarter zip and your Walters World t-shirt underneath, you know, to keep yourself so you have yourself kind of layered up because it does get chilly at night. So if you're going to be going out for the evening. Don't go out with shorts and stuff like that anyway. But just know that at night it can drop off quite a few degrees, okay? Another thing in terms of the safety kind of thing, which is one of the more interesting parts of Vegas is the people here are crazy. They can be crazy fun and have a great time with them or they can be crazy or they can be like, oh, what's going on? And one of the things I'll say about safety is don't trust people all the time when they talk to you here in Vegas. I can't tell you how many times I've bumped into people and I've got my Walters World shirt. I'm like, oh, my name is Walters. I'm like, really? Uh-huh. And how many people have, oh, I'm, I know your hometown. I've been there. I'm like, really? Because I just made that up. You're going to get a lot of people trying to talk you into doing things. And so make sure when everybody tells you anything, you take it with a grain of salt, okay? Because think about it, the concierge and the bell desk and stuff like that, they're getting a kickback for everything they sell. So if they see that you're like, okay, how long is the tour uh, to Hoover Dam? I'm like, oh, we don't have a lot of time. Which one's faster? Oh, well, the express one. That's the fastest on the gray line. It's only a three hour tour. Yeah, it's three hours after you finally leave Vegas and do all this stuff. Actually, it's a five and a half hour tour, but they don't actually tell you those things. So always, always take things with a grain of salt. I can't tell you how many people I've walked by that they're the marketing manager of the Flamingo or the, or the, the or Paris or something like that. So just be prepared not to trust people, or at least if you do talk to them, you can trust them, but just know that there's probably an ulterior motive to that. So be careful with that. Now, in terms of some frustrations, if you are going to take some tours from here in Vegas to go to the Grand Canyon or you're going to be going to Hoover Dam or something like that, a lot of the bus tours, what they do is they have the buses come pick you up at your different hotels and then they take you to another location where you sit for like half an hour when all the buses come together and then they put you on more buses to go out. So for example, Hoover Dam, we got picked up at 845, but we didn't actually leave Las Vegas and the Gray Line Center until about 1030. So I'm like, wait, I just wasted almost two hours of my day to get to just the outskirts of town to sit and wait so it does get frustrating so make sure when you check those tours check TripAdvisor don't necessarily trust the concierge and bell desk all the time do your own research and that's one thing I'm gonna say is if you're gonna be asking the bartenders and the waiters about good places to eat and drink and stuff like that remember they're make they're living off of tips so they probably can't afford the $50 meals and stuff like that okay so what you need to do is like they're probably gonna give you advice but also what you need to do the trip advisors and the other things find out what restaurants they they kind of check and we've been going to the top restaurants on trip advisor you know to kind of stay in the top 10 top 20 kind of stuff and we and i'll be honest trip advisor ratings have done the best job we've had done better than concierge or the bell desk and stuff like that and the last thing i want to talk about is kids 
A lot of people ask, Mark, should I take my kids to Las Vegas? And I'm gonna tell you, no, don't, okay? Now, I know that Vegas has become more than just gambling, but you have to, be, you have to realize this, you, you do see a lot of very interesting people, a lot of very interesting things. You know, girls all around with G-strings and just the pasties on their nipples, and guys actually dress the exact same way, which can be a little, you know, if you got a, you know, a five-year-old be like, hey, what's going on here? You might not feel comfortable with that. Um, and, but if you're cool with that, that's fine. I've seen kids here too. Me personally, I probably would not bring my nine-year-old or my four-year-old here. Now, if they were like teenagers and stuff like that, they might find it kind of interesting to see these things. Um, so I would really caution you if you're thinking about bringing your young kids to come here. Now, there are things to do with kids. They've got, a, you know, there's a children's museum, a discovery museum you can see here. There's, you know, like Mac Harris. You can see some uh, like family-friendly magic shows and comedy and stuff like that. They do have that. You, of course, walking through. I've seen a lot of kids here that really enjoy just going through like the, the forum shops at, at Caesars to see the, the store. It looks like you're in Rome and Italy and go to the Venetian and, and see the gondolas going by and the, you know, and the, the fall of Atlantis and the mirage with the volcano and and Bellagio with the fountains and stuff like that there is a lot of stuff for kids to do but also what I'd recommend is rent a car and get out to like Mount Charleston and take them out because honestly walking your kids at night on the strip probably not the best thing to do at least from my perspective and you guys have watched enough of my videos to know how I traveled my kids pretty much everywhere we didn't bring them on this trip okay so that's one of those things there now i hope that helps you know a little bit more about vegas before you come is it worth coming to yes it is worth coming to especially if you like gambling if you like gambling you can stay a long time here because you can gamble all the time and see some cool stuff if you're not really big into gambling but you like the shows come for a long weekend you'll have a great time it's well worth it and it's really cheap to get here but you will spend a lot of money when you are here so be prepared especially with those you know, 5.99 atm fees ouch so be prepared anyway i hope you have a great time here in vegas we've got all kinds of other videos for vegas five things you'll love and hate ten things that'll shock you about vegas all on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram all these kind of things and i apologize for the darkness and these kind of things it's my last night here in vegas and i've kind of collected all these things and i wanted to get them out to you so you have something so you can be better prepared for vegas so you can enjoy it okay so don't forget to tip your waiters bellhops and the ladies that change your uh laundry at the uh, hotel three to five dollars a day okay have a great one and bye from las vegas